Thank you, welcome. So let me start off this conversation with a quick question. You don't have to show me hands, just answer it mentally. During that last break, how many of you checked your work email on your mobile device? 100%, right? Or 99.9, .9, maybe that one person didn't. Now, I don't have to answer, ask this audience about, did you adhere to good cybersecurity principles? Did you not also use that same device to check your personal email? Did you not use public Wi-Fi? Did you not use a public cloud sharing site? None of you would do that, and I'm sure of that. Would your end users answer that question the same way? I'm guessing the answer is heck no, all right? We talk a lot about transformation in IT, and you've already heard that from a few of the other speakers. The fact is, in the workforce, the workplace, the employees, there is a massive transformation underway. People are using their mobile devices more. They're working from home, remote employees. Bring your own device. Bring your own application. All of this is transitioning how we have conducted business. And I think we'd all agree it's a good thing, right? It makes our life easier. We can catch our kids' soccer game. We can get out of the job a little bit earlier. There's a lot of value to that. But is it also not creating new vulnerabilities? And today's conversation is all about how are we protecting ourselves and our data from our own employees? There are certainly the big outsider threats, the attackers, the hackers, the hacktivists, the nation states, but our own employees, whether they're malicious or more likely just darn negligent, how can we be ensured that they're not creating risk for us and exposing valuable data? And I'd like to bring forward a new concept, data-centric security. And my proposition will be, if we think about protecting data differently, we have a much better chance of embracing the modern workforce, allowing people to be people, while at the same time mitigating our risk. So work, with this workforce transformation, you really do see people behaving differently. We conducted a survey a few months ago, and we interviewed millennials, which will soon be the largest portion of our workforce. And we found that 80% of them said that they choose where they work in part by the IT environment. And half of them said if the IT environment wasn't compelling, they would walk. Now, we're all fighting for the same best in breed talent. We're all looking for the next great employee. We have to acknowledge that the IT environment which we're providing has now become a component to your workforce satisfaction. And there's an expectation now that I'm going to be able to work from home. I'm going to be able to bring my own devices. I'm going to be able to do the things I need to do to get my job done as efficiently as possible. And oh, by the way, the heck with that data security stuff. On top of that, there are other changes that are also putting increased stress on how you protect your data from the insider threat. You have more contractors, more supplementals, more freelancers. By 2020, they're going to account for a quarter of all white-collar employees. You have more collaboration taking up place outside of your organization. Ho organizations are more horizontal. We're working more closely with other groups. We have to share data. And there's more data. We all know that story. Big data, data explosion. But what's often overlooked is 45% of all organizational data still resides on the endpoint. And that number hasn't changed much over the last few years. So despite cloud and VDI and all these bigger trends that are going to move data off the endpoint, it's still there. And it's still there in mass. So the challenge that you're looking at is, OK, I want to embrace mobile workforce. I want to embrace the modern paradigm of how people work. But I can't do that if I'm creating so much risk for myself. We have to find the right balance. Dell conducted a survey a few months ago, and we interviewed thousands of line of business professionals. And the good news, bad news story that we found was, while most people feel accountable for protecting their employer's data, if they have to choose between protecting data or getting their job done, which do you think they're going to choose? Always the latter. And it makes sense. That's how they're compensated. That's how they're measured. Of course, they're going to focus on the most efficient path to go and getting my job done. And even though you might be educating me and helping me understand that there's data risk associated with it, I'm not going to look at that if it's going to impede me from completing this report. 
collaborating with this employee, collaborating with this other organization. We found that 68% of federal line of business employees would share confidential data outside the organization. 40% of them regularly use personal email for workforce communications. 45% uses public cloud sharing for work communications, and a third of them use public Wi-Fi for work activities. This isn't good data hygiene, you know it. And it's not a surprise, right? We know our end users are the biggest challenge. But historically, we haven't had a method, we haven't had a means to allowing them to be people, but at the same time controlling their security. Right now, there's sort of three different scenarios. One is education. Big believer in it, we should do more of it. But the fact is that 90% of those employees that we surveyed had education. Education, we should be doing more of it. It's insufficient. Second option, go back old school. Lock everything down. That endpoint becomes a vault. You can't move data off from USB. You can't use public cloud sharing. You can't use personal email. And that might work for some of you in this audience. But for the vast majority, again, employees want to be able to work collaboratively. They want to be able to work remotely. Taking an approach that's locking things down is going to demotivate your workforce. And honestly, they're going to likely find ways around it. The third option is network-based security, things like data loss prevention. Certainly has a role, but that role is limited. It's really limited for protecting PII and really obvious exfiltration. It's not going to stop the work from home scenarios, and it's certainly not going to stop the ability for your organization to collaborate with others. Thus, the need for data-centric security. Being able to protect data wherever it goes, no matter what state it's in, and no matter who's accessing it. So let's click down there a little bit further. First, it's about protection. Encryption. Heard encryption quite a few times already today. But encryption is all about the key management. And having each document assign its own key allows you to work seamlessly, but still have a rich level of protection. And that encryption has to continue regardless of the state of the data. So if it's in motion, it's encrypted. It's at rest, it's encrypted. Mobile device, PC, regardless of where it is, it's encrypted. The second element is monitoring. You want to know where your data is. Can you tell me today that you know where all your sensitive documents are? I talk to customers like yourselves all the time, and usually when I ask that question, I get a look down at the table or, well, maybe, kind of, sort of. It's difficult today given the fact there is so much sharing, there is so much collaboration. But if each piece of data is able to be tracked and monitored, and you know who has it, what they're doing with it, and where geographically they are, you're a big step forward in protecting yourself. And finally, you want to be able to control. And by control, I mean once I give someone access to my data, I don't want to just blindly let them have it, where they can send it to someone else, and they can cut and copy and paste, and they can print it out and just leave it on the table. I want to say, you can have access to this report, but with these policies. Expiration embargo, cut, copy, paste control, print control, send control, even watermarks. Changing how we're protecting ourselves, not by limiting our end users, because that's going to be a flawed plan, but by embracing how end users are working today, but still having data security that supports them. So let's do a quick example of how this would work. You have an employee. He's working on a sensitive report. Let's call that employee Donald. Donald creates the report, but he wants to work on it at home. So he pushes it up to Dropbox with the expectation of being able to download it to his personal PC at night. That normally would be a red flag. Oh my gosh, it's going to Dropbox. What happens if Donald's wife emails it out to her Pilates club? Right? Risk. But if the encryption remains intact up in Dropbox and on that personal device, it doesn't matter if it does get inadvertently mailed out. It's still protected. Now Donald wants to send it to a colleague. Let's call that colleague Paul. So Paul gets the document, but Donald doesn't trust Paul completely. So I'm going to set policy that says, yes, you can view it, you can manipulate it, you can save it, you can do all the things I need you to do with that document, but you can't send it to someone else without my permission, you can't cut, copy, paste, you can't print, 
And oh, by the way, I'm going to watermark it. So if you do use your smartphone to take a picture of it, well, I got you. Now, Paul does his work, good collaboration with Donald. He decides to send it to another colleague. Let's call this person Nancy. So Nancy gets the document. Now, she can't open it, but she gets a cover page saying, you can't open it, here's why. But by the way, if you need access, click here and we'll send a note to Donald and let him make that decision. So she clicks on it, Donald sees a notification, and he can make the decision, yeah, I'm going to let Nancy use it, or no, I don't trust her, she's a bad seed, I'm not going to let her have that access. But we're controlling the use. It's no longer sending a document and hoping blindly. It is providing that value of being able to protect the document regardless of its location. Be able to extend your security forward. Too often we get caught up in trying to control the individual assets, the network, the endpoint. These are just elements. It's not what you really care about. We're caring about the data. So moving to a data-centric approach provides you a much more robust methodology of embracing workforce and how they're transforming and how they're using mobile devices and how they're working from home while at the same time securing your data. And again, there are three essential elements. The protection. The protection that goes with the data no matter how it exfiltrates the device, whether that's email or public cloud sharing or network file share or USB drive or whomever. And that protection that stays in place regardless of what location the document's in. Not tied to any single infrastructure. It works with Microsoft, it works with Google, it works with Dropbox, it works with Box, because the world is heterogeneous. And you need that protection to stay with the data regardless of its location. It provides you the control you need. So no longer are you sending documents outside your organization and blindly hoping that those individuals are going to use it correctly. You can now send policy with it. Not inhibiting collaboration, not slowing your end users down, or letting them be the people they need to be, but increasing your control. And finally, that monitoring aspect. How much value would you have by now being able to see where your data is geographically? Knowing who has touched different documents, knowing what they're trying to do, and at all times being able to take action so if Nancy or Paul or Donald does anything wrong, you can revoke keys and that data is protected. So as we're looking at how to protect ourselves, and certainly those external threats are scary and very real and we need to be making investments, we also have to acknowledge that one of our biggest risk factors is our own employees because they are, after all, people. Negligent, forgetful, sometimes malicious people and thinking about how do you secure their world without inhibiting what they do. And our proposal is data-centric security. Thank you for your time. Have a great day.